Throughout my life, whether it was writing multiple books or getting a doctorate or building multiple YouTube channels and businesses, there's been one principle that I have held true as my North Star. And that one principle has been the reason for the success that I've had because it is so bloody simple. Now in this video, I thought I would share what exactly that principle is and a few stories from my own life that can help you get inspired. What's up guys, it's Alex Hine, author of the book, Master the Dizzle. Now, before we jump in here, I've put together a free journaling worksheet to help you figure out what your dream life is and how to design that going forward. So check it out, it's the first link right below this video here. So I was always very, very insecure about one thing. In my 20s, I was primarily focused on just trying to figure out what life I love the most. And that was primarily focused around work because for me, you know, you spend more hours at work than you do with anyone you love, your friends, your spouse, your boyfriend, girlfriend, your parents, whoever. You literally spend more hours at work in your lifetime than doing anything else you love. So I thought, I better sure as hell figure out what is it that I actually want to do for work because if I've got to work nine hours a day, it better be something that I want to be doing. I'll take a poverty income if I like doing it. So I felt insecure though, not because of that. I felt insecure because my friends from college went through the safe, secure route. You know, they moved to New York City and they got jobs as boring finance people. They went into startups and they got guaranteed paying jobs. They went into accounting. They went into medical school, whatever. They went into professions where they were guaranteed having a good income and a smaller percentage, a very, very high income. Now, I'm over here taking risks on my dream life, taking risks on trying to do anything that seemed appealing. I started multiple startups. One was a quiz for where should I fly in the world. Um, I started multiple websites. I started Modern Health Monk. I started multiple YouTube channels. I wrote multiple books. And some of those things worked out, a small percentage, and others didn't. And all the while though, I felt like my friends were silently judging me because I wasn't making any money, like 40,000 or less, and they were making 70, 80, 90, a hundred thousand dollars. And so by the time we reached 30, I was still living on basically under $50,000 a year as an entrepreneur. And even though I was making more than that, it was really just to mitigate the risk of being self-employed. So as time goes on, you know, we get to 31 and 32 and 33. Now my friends are 70, 80, $90,000 a year they're making. And they're looking at me like this guy who's living in a small apartment, but is passionate about what he does and is building interesting things, they're just thinking, man, he should have gotten this job that we got, should have gone into finance. And I'm thinking, thank God I did not go into finance. So even as I got to 30, after six years of being an entrepreneur, working on my entrepreneurial dreams, I still didn't have much financially to show for it. And a funny thing happened though, as time progressed. As I got into my early 30s, my friends, who'd been at their jobs for six, seven, eight years, their salaries basically capped. Most were making like $80,000 a year, which is a good, but not a great income. And they had capped in their early 30s. But now, after 34, 35, my business and my income started to grow. And then after about 10 years of being an entrepreneur, I was making one to two times what most of my friends were making at their salary job that was now boring, they hated it. They were working 40, 50, or even 60 hours for that income with 12 days of vacation a year. And I'm over here making that same income with eight weeks of vacation per year anywhere in the world. And you know the one thing that made the difference? It wasn't some special tactic or some special principle. It was just one commitment to a single idea, growth. The principle I told myself and the promise I made to myself was that I am going to be relentlessly growth oriented. I'm not going to stress about the money. I'm just going to get 1% better every single day and try my best to make every year better than the last. And that made all the difference. Now for me, one thing I've noticed with people after having coached hundreds is that there is one response to the good things in life and the difficulties in life that will make your life better no matter what. It's that you decide to get better. You got divorced or got broken up with by the person you loved. Go get better, improve yourself, work on yourself. You didn't get into medical school or the school or grad school you wanted. All right, go get better, go work on yourself. Let's say you got into the school. Still, 
go get better. Go work on yourself. You move to a new city alone, Los Angeles, New York, Paris, Tokyo. You have no friends. It's hard right now. Go get better. Work on yourself. You have an issue with your parents, your relationship. It's stressed and fractured. Fine. Go get better. Work on yourself. You have a friend that you have beef with. They're always talking crap about you. They're envious. They're jealous. Whatever it is. All right. Go get better. Go work on yourself. The response to everything in life, if you just choose that to be, I'm going to always make sure I'm improving myself, I'm working on myself, and I'm getting better, means that your life will always get better. Whether you get what you want or whether you don't get what you want, whether you get that person you loved or whether the dream person you didn't know existed breaks up with you. If your response to both the good and the bad is progress, that you want each year to be bigger and better than the last, your life really will become that way. But that's not what most people do. So I'm gonna leave you with this. No matter what happens to you in your life, whether it's what you want or what you don't want, whether it's good or whether it's bad, my question for you is very, very, very fundamentally simple. Will you grow based on the challenges or will you stay the same? That will determine your fate. That's what I have for you today, guys. Check out these other videos, and I'll see you soon.